ask yourself, have your supervisor, has your supervisor introduced you to his colleagues and collaborators in, in the international conference? Not yet. That's not good. OK. It's a very good signal if your supervisor is very happy to introduce you to everyone. That means, in his mind, you are the most important student. Okay? So, how to do that? Make yourself important by reviewing papers for your supervisors and team, and having running conferences, managing student RAs, all the things are not servicing your supervisor, are training yourself, you are learning from doing. Okay. And step three, sharing your great expectations. And you do better, share frankly with your supervisors what you need from him or her. For example, you need quality assurance. You need him to tell you how to do. You need him to tell you when to stop. And sometimes you need emotional support from him. You need his appreciation and encouragement. And you need his constructive suggestion. And you need nurturing environment. If you have this expectation, just tell him. And of course, on the other side, your supervisor has some other expectations from you. You finish in time. You go on to supervise. You do a good job. You find a good job. You publish a good journal paper, and you become finally an independent scholar. Then bear in mind all these things. You have to learn how to solve the challenging job that is dealing with conflicts. Scholars are all scholars. They have very personal views, perspectives. Um, very insightful and critical, critical viewpoints. So it's very normal and very common. Supervisors are not in line with your ideas. And it's very common that you, your supervisor, and co supervisor, the three kingdoms of your academic kingdom, have a war. Okay? Conflicts are very common. So what can I do? You need to understand this. This situation is like marriage. Okay? We are partner. We are studying together. And of course, the end of a marriage is divorce. So you have to be prepared for that. When you step into a marriage, you have to be prepared for the end of marriage. That's divorce. So how to manage the marriage? It's not so easy job. I have the four C model to share with you. The first one, communicating. Communicating is the only cure to solve all the problems. Most of conflicts are caused by miscommunication. As long as the communication is going on very well, there should be no miscommunications. And second one, you have to do compromising. There are two of you in this marriage, and you cannot just focus on your own interest. You have to take care of the other side. You can now say, you are my boss. You should, you should take care of my interest. I have no interest in your interest. That's not good. You should use a win-win approach. Remember. Win-win approach is the only solution. And the third one, consulting your co-supervisor and panel members if your supervisor is always unavailable. And finally, if you really think the marriage is a dead end, you should think of the divorce. Yes, you can change your supervisor, formally or informally. Both channels are workable. <laughs> and the funding will not be a problem because funding, if you are a type A offer, do you know what's type A? 
Type B means that your scholarship is sponsored by Hong Kong U and the Hong Kong government. <laughs> Type B means that your supervisor uses his P, uh, project money to sponsor you, PGS. Do you know that? Anyone is Type B offer? Hands up. Oh, oh, two, three. So if you're Type B offer, that's a little bit difficult <laughs> because your boss is using the money to sponsor your study then you'd better not think about divorce. <laughs> anyway, I think most of marriage has a very good happily happy ending, but to do that, to achieve that end, you have 10 major tasks to go through. And this you have done, right? First, literature review. Second, data collecting. Third, get feedback. Fourth, spaniel reports. Fifth, module taking, that's coursework and assignments. And third, six, combination of candidature. And seven, writing up your thesis. And eight, submission. And nine, viva. And 10, publication. So the 10 tasks, you have to go through them one by one. So I suggest you using this kind of visualization method to schedule your PhD study at Hong Kong U. Task 1 to 10 and different months. And this is another difficult thing or situation. When you expand, there is a procrastination. That means delay. Um, we understand delay is quite normal. There are many reasons to cause a delay of your sub submission, of, of your writing. So you first had to pick up the reasons. What's the major reason of your delay? Poor time management. Most of the students, when they write the email to, to supervisor to say apologize, they use this as the reason. Sorry, dear supervisor, I know I have very poor time management. I promise I will submit next month. And then next month, another email comes. Sorry, I want more extensions and more extensions, and more extensions. Then 12 years passed. <laughs> yes. Then you have to think whether you will have the motivation and interest. I suggest you did, you'd better choose to leave as early as possible, because 12 years is not a short time. Yeah, you you get over you <laughs> you have queued 12 years for PhD thesis. It's ridiculous. Right? So you have to understand whether you have overloaded yourself, whether you have some other things, whether it's your personal problem, whether your personality is problematic, and some other things. I think you can use the following 10 tips to solve the problem. Okay. If it helps, please tell me. Okay. First, examine the amount of time to be delayed. Second, set reasonable goals. Then have a to-do list. Then create a new habit. Then approach each task in small intervals. Then just get started. Just do it right now, okay? And reward yourself along the way. And stay focused. And don't, is, don't expect perfection. And give up something as a trade-off. This is very important. You have to give up. Manchester says that people should give up something if they want to do some great jobs. And in English, we have such kind of similar old things. For everything you gain, you lose something else. For everything you lose, you gain something, you gain something else. So it's a trick off. And then, for your PhD study, I can say like this. You gain your PhD, but you lose something else. The problem is, what is something else? That is your personal def definition. Now we are in the puzzle, and the final Final uh, goal is to find an academic job in the field. And Hong Kong U is the best university in town. 
and number one in Asia. And you are so privileged to be here. And there are so many scholars that are very willing to help you. But the problem is you need to find them out. And your supervisors might be good scholar, but not necessarily be a good supervisor. Remember this. Not every teacher, not every professor is a good te teacher or good supervisor by nature. They are still learning how to be a good supervisor. In this way, maybe you can become his teacher. What you are doing to him is teaching him how to be a good supervisor. And I wish you can learn that from this talk. Please email me if you have more questions. And I, pr I promise to be believe that I have some floor time for questions. And you can ask me a question right now. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Lee. And uh, maybe I should ask you to come again. Next time, we give a talk about planning and managing your PhD students <laughs> as a supervisor <laughs> as well. Anyway, uh, thanks very much. And Dr. Lee is going to entertain the audience by answering some questions. So, please. Yes. I'm an undergraduate student and I came here out of curiosity. Uh, I wanted to ask, um, if you were an undergraduate now, with the knowledge of having done a PhD, what would you do to prepare? You, you are undergraduate? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Okay, um, audience, back to students. Yeah, um, if you want to do some PhD study at Hong Kong U first, you have to pay attention to your GPA. First, we look at GPA. GPA means every, anything. So first one, if your GPA is under 3.5, you have no way to get type A offer. That is, you have no way to get sponsorship from the university and government. And you have no way to get uh, scholarship. But if your GPA is under 3.0, you have no way to get the type B offer. Yeah. Type B means your, spon your supervisor will sponsor you. If your TPA is more than 3.0 and just under 3.5, you can ask your supervisor to sponsor your study um, if he has the money. But if your TPA is totally up, uh, under 3.0, you have no chance to get in. You, can, uh, you need to ask the graduate school to waive the basic requirement unless you have some other strong evidence. That's very important. So, be a good student at undergraduate time. No time to play. <laughs> Any more questions? I can um, maybe I'll ask one question myself. How how can you encourage your student for not getting married and not having kids? <laughs> Very good question. I have, a, I have a real case I can share with you. Uh, uh, Eva uh, was your resident, right? Yes. You know her, I right? I remember her, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a promise. Um, when she get, got registered as a PhD student, I said, no marriage during PhD study. Can you promise me? <laughs> yes, she promised. Then I took her as my PhD student. Otherwise, I can now take. I said, Sorry, we have to be realistic. You cannot manage two important things in your life, PhD and marriage. But finally, she managed it. And at the, before the final submission, or, um, after, after submitting the first draft, she applied for marriage. <laughs> I said, okay, you have submitted the first draft, and I read your thesis, it's well done. So you're almost there, so you can waste some, waste some time to do your marriage, then I'll approve that. Although I have no right to approve that, 
but it's a promise between us. So she asked me, whether I can get it? Yes, you can, because you have done all the things. Then I can tell you with proud, she is, is another PhD student graduating three years. My PhD student graduated in three years. You know her personally, right? Yes, yes, she's really nice. And uh, I just actually attended my, my student's wedding ceremony. I hope that was not a mistake. <laughs> no, uh, that was a question from one of the students. Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm a, a year four PhD student. I really hope I, um, in 2008, I attend your lecture. So uh, maybe I will finish my thesis in three year time. Um, uh, right now I'm prepared to find a job. Uh, would you like uh, to give me some advice or suggestion? Thank you very much. Maybe next time I can do a sharing about how to find a job. But this moment I can answer very quickly. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, first you need to attend international conference to set up social networking as soon as possible in the third or fourth year. It's very important. Then you need to seek your supervisor's help. Supervisor is the, the biggest stakeholder of your job hunting. And my personal experience is that and my supervisor is very important because she needs to write the reference letters and all the universities pay attention to supervisors or more waiting to supervise the reference letter. It's very important. And more important than that, I have personal uh, tips to share with you. I did some volunteer guest lecturing for other universities when I was a PhD student here. So all the universities know that, knew that I was here. Um, when I was in the final year, some universities, maybe I cannot say it in this way, but it's the truth. They created the job for me and told me that you better go to visit our website. This job was designed for you because we wanted you. And before my submission, the human resource manager came to meet me and said, will you join us? Oh, let me think. <laughs> and I got three offers uh, in the graduation because I did guest lecture for three universities during my studies for volunteer because I cannot be employed as a PGS holder. And that's what that's my that's the same suggestion I did to my Eva. She's my first PhD student. She also did some guest lecturing as a volunteer in other universities. So at the graduation moment, she had tertiary teaching experience and had been well uh, familiar with all the universities. So they know her. So it's very easy to get a job. I guess the take home message is that be nice to your supervisor. <laughs> 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 this is particularly true to my student here. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's one more question. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Lee. Uh, thank you for giving us so many professional and valuable details. And uh, uh, I want to ask you, um, what do you think is, is the most important one uh, for to become a, a professional scholar of graduates? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I think the most important factor to me is a genuine interest. You have strong interest in something. You have curiosity, then you have motivation. Then you want to chase up, then you want to, uh, want to um, follow up for your whole life. Then that's very important. I said earlier, you need better find a lifelong career. And that's a research question could be a topic for a lifelong study. So I, I was, was very lucky. I found one research question. It's a very uh, long-lasting research question. You could do 30 years to do research. Then it's very important to keep. Any other questions? Yes. Dr. Lee uh, has promised to stay here until 12 tonight. <laughs>
I don't have the lead. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, from the experience or in, from your suggestion, would you recommend students to submit part of their thesis for journal publications, or, or, or would you prefer the students to do it after the thesis submission? Okay. You mean before the submission? Yes, I did this because I found that use of wise may be uh, one person in the field. You need to go through other experts' examination before final submission. If your thesis or study could be accepted by all the scholars or the major scholars in the field, that means your study is a well done one. And I was very lucky. I got the journal, the hard copy journal, when I went to my viva. So I took my journal with me and I showed it deliberately to the chairman of the viva. Look, this is my work, which has been published in the top journal. And this is a strategy. And the, super and, and the chairperson got the message clearly. Mm, that means your study has been very good quality and well received by the field. And the examiners and the chairpersons will rethink their attitude. Although, I, I, sorry, at that point I was thinking negative about them. But after that, I read their examination report. I found their comments. Their comments were very good. So my, ex, my excellent thesis was very well graded by them. But I didn't know that before I came to the Viva. So I just took the journal as a defense. Yes, it's a defense. And I found it's workable. It changed all the things. And when I went to the interview, and I showed them the journal, and all the universities, they are asking for journal publications. Without journal publication, you cannot find a job today. So that's why I ask my students, before you submit your thesis, you need to submit three journal papers. <coughs> After that, I cannot guarantee a job for you. Yes, it's the reality, not my requirement. And I echo that as well. In our area, we also encourage students to submit to the journals uh, before they graduate. Yeah. So get as many papers out as possible before they graduate. Any other questions? For your sharing, Dr. Lee, uh, some of your tips or uh, suggestions sound uh, common sense to me because I'm doing some of the things, but I still learn something new tonight. So thank you for your sharing. My question for you is that um, sometimes, how come you just uh, lose your motivation, and then how can you got motivated again? <laughs> yeah, for your PhD life, you know. <laughs> that's yeah. That's that's a very tough problem to solve. If you lose your motivation. Then go shopping. <laughs> 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 then, uh, then you'll find you have no money. <laughs> then you have motivation to work. <laughs> That's the cycle. <laughs> the last one from the back. Thank you for your sharing, and um, I I have question, uh, maybe um, a little interesting, um, because I have seen that uh, you just spend um, one hour a day um, to eat and chatting. So I'm just wondering, uh, nowadays in Hong Kong, you if you uh, eating in the uh, canteen, uh, you have to uh, queue in at least uh, 20 min minutes. And also, I think um, especially for girls, it is impossible to uh, spend only one hour to eat and uh, chat. So <laughs> uh, I'm wondering, uh, do you have a girlfriend <laughs> studying your PhD? Because if you want to keep your uh, guilt relations with your partners, 
do you need to spend some time in chatting? So how can you manage the time? Thank you. Okay, it's very interesting. Um, yeah, I did not go to canteen to take dinner. I cooked myself. So I cooked. So I cook uh, in the pantry, and I can sit down in the pantry to do chit chatting and eating. Well, I didn't go to can because the food is not so healthy. <laughs> and I can cook. I can cook all the healthy food for myself, and um, with my favorite flavor. It's very important. And um, for girls, I do appreciate gender difference, or I'm not uh, discriminating genders. But I do appreciate the difference between genders. That is, girls love shopping and chit chatting every day. That's it's quite normal. I do appreciate and encourage you to enjoy it. But on top of on top of it, you'd better guarantee ten hours working on your PhD study. Then, if you can guarantee ten hours working, the other the rest of the hours belong to your chit chatting. You can chit chat overnight. Never mind. But, but the question was like, did you have a? You have a girlfriend when you uh, when you PhD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have and many, many. I have many female friends, <laughs> and yes, some friends are my uh, are, are playing table tennis with me. Some friends are having dinner with me. Some friends are having shopping with me, and I have so many friends. My strategy is to keep a balance with many friends. Then you will not be engaged too much. Balance is my strategy. The balance is having many girlfriends. Thank you. Any, Thank you. any more questions? Hello, Dr. Lee. Thank you for your very practical sharing. I'm an uh, undergraduate student, and uh, I know that the PhD study is a very uh, significant tra transaction from the uh, transition from the um, undergraduate study to a uh, research study. So, from the uh, learning what you are designed to learn to doing the research on your selected uh, certain field. So, I wonder what are, what other most uh, Significant, significant quality you recommend and you value most for your PhD student and what are the uh, qualities that you recommend uh, the undergraduate student to uh, make preparations for? Thank you. Okay, thank you. And it's a very important question. Many colleagues of mine ask me the same question because they found my students are very good. Really, really much better than other college students. I said first, I'm very picky. I'm very, very picky. So most of the cases, I reject all the applicants for the first time. I ask them to wait for more, two more years. When you email me next time, you get my reply, typically like this, sorry, there's a long waiting list. You can wait for two more years if you really want to be my student. Why? Because I want to test whether you are ready for this, whether you are keen to do this, whether you mean to do this. Some people just for temporary interest. Some people just have very temporary intention and just for personal interest, not for lifelong interest. So I cannot accept that kind of prompt response. So I want a lifelong interest. So most of the cases will be rejected immediately. So, And second, all my case students should be uh, uh, Sometimes uh, my RAs, okay, they have to do some R research, a simple job for me. I have to test them for one or two years to see whether they are qualified for a researcher. So no RA job, I cannot guarantee I can take you. So I didn't take strangers, okay. It's very important. I didn't take strangers. No way to get in my team if you are not a RA for me for one or two years. It's very important. And third, you have to be very good in GPA. That, that is the universal requirement. I have no say in this way because it's a basic requirement. But you have to be very experienced in the field. For example, you have frontline experience. I'm doing education research. All my students should be doing some teaching job before coming to me. And that will be very important. Without frontline experience, 
your research ideas will be daydreaming ideas, cannot be workable. I want my student to be very experienced and be very realistic researcher in the field. And they can become very good scholar in the future. So I pick the best student from the applicants. And more than that, you have to find some interesting research topic to interest me. Yes. And you sometimes students have their own interest, but they cannot find some supervisors who are interested in their research topic. So that's very important. You need to find some interesting topic that your supervisor is very interested in. Then you two can get match. That's very important. <coughs> so the last, this is the really last one because we have no air conditioning after that. <laughs> Hey, actually, uh, it's not uh, it's, it's a question I have, so um, two people wise. My first point, uh, would you prefer your PhD students to get uh, their annual application uh, twice per year or once per year? And second one, um, I already started on my work in my PhD, it's my first year PhD, and I, I, my supervisor just suggested me a very interesting topic, but uh, what if you, if, uh, what does this PhD student if I found another topic during my research? Is it, uh, is it normal for, uh, for Supervisors to uh, to allow the student to change as a topic in the in the middle of research. So, sir, what's the first question? The first one, as a as a supervisor, would you prefer your students to uh, to get their notification twice per year or once per year? Oh, okay. that's a very good question. I didn't encourage my student to apply for more times because I only get them ready uh, to submit. Okay, if they are not ready, I will not encourage them to submit. So when they give the, the green light, they can submit and they can get it. Otherwise, they cannot guarantee them. I don't want frustration to my students. If you failed in the first round, you'll be very frustrated, and then you try again. Maybe it's not showing. So I want to show me to students. That's very important. And your second question is, is uh, topic. Yeah, changing topic. Um, I do think. Uh, changing topic is a mutual agreement between supervisor and student. Um, supervisor cannot ask student to change the topic, but student can ask supervisor whether he or she can change the topic. That's important. Then you have to sit down to discuss the possibilities and the futures. I think it's quite normal to change topic during the study. And I did that in the first year. And I think it was well. Well, <laughs> that's one question from a high school student. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is going to be the last question. Okay, that's, okay, that's our young generation. Okay. okay, basically I saw a slide of you showing us how you organize your time and I can see all 24 hours of your uh, daytime being, uh, like all 24 hours of a day being used, but for me openly when I have free time, after school, I would just basically waste my time and just can't see gun. So, how could I, you know, use my time more efficiently so that I will have time to revise and more time to sleep and play? Hmm. Very good question. Uh, it's not real. It's not real academic life skills, but it's a real life skill. How to manage your time in, uh, effectively and meaningfully. It's very important. I don't think sitting back in sofa is a waste of time. You have to think in another perspective. For example, if I'm sitting in the sofa to watch TV to learn Cantonese, then my catch up time becomes very productive and education time. For example, when you are cooking, you think it's a waste of time, but I'm learning how to cook better. I'm trying to I'm trying to carry on the tradition of Chinese cooking arts. And that's more meaningful and important than doing PhD study. <laughs> And then in that way, all your wasted time suddenly turns into meaningful time. And every minute means an important thing to your life. That's my thinking. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, this is the real last question because it's our next generation. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Lee. And um, thank you very much for sharing your pearl of wisdom. In return, the graduate house will give you a diamond. <laughs> Just say that to you.
Thank you very much for attending tonight's lecture, and I hope you had a good time. Okay, thanks.